Have you ever experienced a glitch in the matrix? We've got such stories for you today, so welcome back, friends. I'm so glad you're here. If you're new, why not hit that subscribe button? First glitch. Sorry if I make any mistake, as English is not my first language. I live in France, not far from Paris. This story took place two years ago when I went on vacation in one of the least populated areas of France, the La Cruz department. I had rented a room in a small town called Chenaroy. Chenaroy was perfect for me because I wanted to spend 10 days doing photography of nature and the landscape over there is magnificent. Green rolling hills, lush forests, and an overall very peaceful and calming atmosphere. The first strange event that happened was not too bad. I had put my shoes next to the bed while I was taking a nap upon arriving in Chen Neroy. When I woke up, there was only one shoe. While I was searching for the other shoe under the bed, I thought I heard a noise in the bathroom and found the other shoe in the sink. If you think this was already weird, wait until I tell you about what happened when I walked through the town early the next morning. I was crossing the main square and I could see the fountain at the center of the square from afar. As I got closer to it, I thought it was weird that I couldn't hear any sound coming from it. I should have been able to hear the sounds of the three or four water streams, which I could see clearly. I wanted to check it out, so I got closer, and when I got about one meter, I think it's three feet from the fountain, the sound suddenly started. So basically one second I couldn't hear anything, then I got a little bit closer and it was like someone unmuted the sound. And it was pretty loud too, because the fountain has several streams. The only other strange thing that happened is that some of the pictures I have taken on that trip have a pink overlay on them, and people told me it could be a technical issue, so I'm not sure if it's related to the other events. Next glitch. I've been in the market for a new couch because my old one was basically a relic from the Stone Age, and sitting on it felt like a medieval torture device. I figured it was high time for an upgrade, and what better place to look than good old Craigslist? I'm scrolling through the listings and I find a beautiful brown leather couch. It looked cozy, stylish, and most importantly, comfortable as all get out. The seller's photos showed this warm, inviting brown leather, and I was sold. I shot them a quick message, haggled a bit, and before I knew it, I was on my way to pick up my new treasure at a very good price. I got that couch into my living room faster than you can say Netflix. It fit perfectly, and I couldn't wait to plop down and catch up on some shows. That first evening was pure bliss. The couch was everything I'd hoped for and more. Soft, comfy, and the perfect shade of brown to match my decor. It felt like it had always belonged there. The next morning, I stumble into the living room, still half asleep, and what do I see? The darn couch is green. Not just any green, mind you, but this dark, foresty green. Like I went to bed with a brown leather couch, and I woke up to Shrek's favorite piece of furniture. How in the world did my beautiful brown leather couch turn into a green monstrosity overnight? I thought maybe I'd misread the ad and saw the couch brown because of the lighting the night before, but I didn't really believe that. I mean, I'm not colorblind or anything. I know brown when I see it. So I dug up the Craigslist ad. Just to confirm, I hadn't imagined the whole brown leather thing. Lo and behold, there it was. Very green. The ad said, dark green leather couch, plain as day. I scrolled through the other pictures, green green and more green no trace of the brown I remembered I must have stared at that screen for a good five minutes trying to reconcile my memory with reality but I couldn't 
I haven't reached out to the seller yet because honestly, I don't even know what to say. Hey, remember that brown couch I bought from you? Well, now it's green. Yeah, that conversation's gonna be a hoot. It's one of those head scratches that makes you question everything, brown or green. Reality or Craigslist. I'll keep you posted if I ever figure it out. Next glitch. When I was around 25, I used to have these recurring dreams about a particular house. In my dreams, it was this big red brick house with a bright yellow door and a small yellow lion statue right in front like you'd see at Chinese restaurants sometimes. The dreams always felt strangely vivid. In these dreams, there was always this kid playing in the yard. I distinctly remember them saying, someday you'll live here too. It used to give me the creeps. Years later, my cousin invited me over to their new house for dinner. As I approached their address, you won't believe what I saw. It was the exact same house from my dreams, complete with that unmistakable lion statue. I was dumbfounded. I asked my cousin about the history of the house, thinking maybe there was a family connection I wasn't aware of. Nope. They just randomly found it while house hunting had no idea about my dreams and thought it was a charming place to live. I can't help but remember the kid from my dream saying, someday you'll live here too. But it isn't me. It's my cousin living there. It feels a bit disappointing to be honest. Next glitch. I was at the post office earlier today, you know, dealing with the usual package pickup and all that. The queue was short, as there were only two of us waiting, me and a guy in front of me. I was standing in line, minding my own business, when the guy in front of me started fiddling with his phone. Nothing out of the ordinary, right? I was lost in my thoughts, daydreaming about getting out of there when I heard it. A distinct thud. I glanced down and there was his phone, face up on the unforgiving post office floor. The screen was shattered and I couldn't help but wince in sympathy. I looked back up at the guy, expecting him to react to this little phone catastrophe. But he didn't. He was still holding a phone, the same one or so it seemed, texting away as if nothing had happened. I looked back down at the shattered phone. It was gone. I couldn't help but glance at the guy again. He was still busy with his phone, completely oblivious to the weirdness that had just happened. Should I say something? Me. Hey, uh, did you just drop your phone? The guy with a sly smile. Drop my phone? Nah, man, you must be seeing things. Me. Nervously. No, I swear, I heard it hit the floor and I saw it shattered. The guy. Sometimes things are not as they seem, my friend. Maybe you should mind your own business. I froze, taken aback by his cryptic response. It was like he was trying to tell me something without actually saying it. He turned back to his phone, his demeanor unchanged, as if our brief exchange had never happened. It was such a small event, but so inexplicable. Have you ever witnessed something so eerie and surreal in your everyday life? Share your stories, theories, or explanations? I could sure use some clarity right about now. Next glitch. When I was a starry-eyed 19-year-old, I found myself immersed in a whirlwind romance with someone who I wholeheartedly believed was the love of my life. Our connection was electric, the kind of love that defied reason. We were inseparable for what seemed like months, until an unexpected twist of fate sent her to a different school, and we were heartbreakingly torn apart. Now, fast forward to the present. I'm 34, leading a life that, by all accounts, should be considered ordinary. Yet, there has always been an aching void within me a longing for the love I once knew. And then, 
in a moment that felt more like a surreal dream than reality, the universe threw me a curveball. I was strolling down a familiar street, lost in my thoughts, when I did a double take that nearly stopped my heart. There she stood, unmistakably her. It was as if time itself had folded back upon itself. My heart raced and I approached her, my voice trembling with a mix of disbelief and longing. Is it really you? I managed to stammer out. To my immense relief and joy, she confirmed her identity and our embrace was like a reunion of souls who had been lost in the ether. Hours flew by as we shared stories, reliving cherished memories of our past. It was as though we had stepped into a time machine, retracing steps we thought were lost forever. When I eagerly shared news of our reunion with friends and family, their reactions were anything but what I had anticipated. They met my revelations with perplexed expressions and a chorus of, I don't remember her. It was as though our entire relationship, the love we had shared, had been meticulously excised from their collective memory. How was such a thing possible? It's as though I remember two parallel timelines from my college years. One where I was deeply in love with her, and another where I frequently visited my family. These timelines exist in isolation, stubbornly refusing to intertwine. It's as though I lived two separate lives, and reconciling them seems nigh impossible. Now, to add another layer of complexity to this story, she and I are together once more embracing the love that has defied the boundaries of time and memory. Yet my family is convinced she's some kind of scammer or imposter. They simply cannot accept that this incredible, inexplicable reunion could be genuine. It's a rift that has left me torn between the love I cherish and the skepticism of those closest to me. Next glitch. I've never been one to keep a journal, but something strange happened today, and I just need to get it down somewhere. I don't know if anyone will believe me, but it feels surreal. I have this small tattoo on my left wrist. It's nothing fancy, just a simple crescent moon, a little nod to my love for stargazing. At least that's the official story. I got it about a year ago, and it's been a part of me ever since. But today, when I looked at it, it had changed. I remember the moon having a slight curve, not quite a perfect crescent, more like an imperfect slice of a watermelon. But today, it was different. The tattoo looked as if it had been retouched. The moon was now a perfect crescent, a sharp curve that didn't match the tattoo I got. I thought maybe I was going crazy, so I showed it to my roommate. She knows about my tattoo. She was there when I got it. She looked at it with a puzzled expression and confirmed what I feared. We tried to make sense of it, coming up with all sorts of explanations. Maybe the ink had settled differently over time. Or perhaps I'd been wearing a watch too tight, causing it to distort the tattoo but none of those explanations felt right. I don't know what's going on with my tattoo, but I can't help feeling like it's a sign of something much bigger than me. Hey, you're still here. Always good to know I'm not the only one. Thank you for listening. You're the best. See you next time then.